And welcome back. Oh, yeah. So we were about midway through the second theory, right? Yes, we were pretty much finishing up. That's not funny. Yeah, apparently he thinks it is. Uh, Or she, for all we know. Internet. Yeah, let's make uh, Freddy, let's let's make Freddy a thing and get uh, him and Chica together, man. Yeah, something like that. I mean, we can make love connections here. We don't discriminate here at uh, Time Out Gaming. No, apparently not, but ah. the internet, you know, all that fanciness. Yes. But anywho, so we finished up believing that you were the killer, you got the victim of the bite of 87. This is, um... Pretty much all just a, um, a nightmare version of you slowly close to your execution. Mm-hmm. And because of what happened to you, you're just living this nightmare over and over and over again. That's why, like a sane person, you wouldn't leave after the first night. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, right. that too. Now, the uh, second part of the theory was what I think of what um, also makes sense to it that you are the killer. But uh, instead of it being the uh, victim of the bite of 87, you have um, multiple personality disorder or dissociative identity disorder, whichever way you want to pronounce it or say it. Mm-hmm. And I believe this is because when the every time that you see it's me, it's me pop up. I believe that it's uh, your different parts of you telling you that you're the one that's been doing all this. And when you see the It's Me, It's Me popping up, wasn't that with the Golden Freddy suit? Yep. In the first game, that yes. was with the Golden Freddy suit. But you also see stuff like that in the Five Nights at Freddy's too, because, I don't know, when you say It's Me, It's Me, it sounds like when you say it, It's Me, I'm the killer, I'm the one that's been doing all this, I'm the one that's causing all this craziness. And it makes sense when you think back to the newspaper clipping that said they saw somebody in a uh, animatronic costume mm-hmm. leading two children away. Now, if you listen to Phone Guy in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, he says, oh, somebody took one of the costumes, one of the animatronic suits. Somebody took one of the suits. Yeah. Uh, the, we had a spare Golden Freddy costume. In the back, and the, the animatronics aren't acting right. Yeah, and it seems like the animatronics aren't acting right, and, you know, they're fine when they act, when they are with the children, but when they get around adults, they just stare. Yeah, they just have that weird, long, uh, mild stare. But um, I think of this is because of that... Um, He's has these impulses, and uh, that's where the children part come in. He is, he his original self works the day, it works the night shift, but his I guess his twisted side, the one that kills, works works the day shift. Mm-hmm. And also, that's my theory behind this is because that's why there's so many different names on these checks, mm-hmm. because it's each per, uh, name that he gives himself for a different personality. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Freddy really just kind of jump scared me because I wasn't paying attention to the TV. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, God. And um, so slowly each day that you are just letting, uh, trying to live out your day, but then these uh, vengeful spirits are uh, the reason why they keep coming after you, and that's why they keep reminding you, it's me, it's me, you're the one that's been killing us, you're the one that's been stuffing us into these things, you're going to pay for it. That's right, and I want everybody to look at Freddy. There are veins in his eyes, which denote, which pretty much tells you that those are not the eyes of the animatronics. Those are human eyes. Yeah, or in very that weird details that you would paint on something like that. Yes, and when you look at the animatronics from the first game, they don't have that detail in their eyes. Not that much, no. no. Uh, let's see, but also I believe that um, while you're going through all this, that uh, mm-hmm. because it makes more sense because while mm-hmm. the ki- um, while the second one, the robots are attacking you mm-hmm. because uh, they scan mm-hmm. you and they're connected to a database. So there's got to be so- a record on you somewhere. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason why they would keep attacking you. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you were the alleged suspect, um, but the case was never resolved, so they may mm-hmm. not have taken that out of their data system mm-hmm. yet. True, or also they... Um, from an unrelated case or something that you've done uh, in your younger years. Mm-hmm. Or, for all we know, he could have blamed the uh, killings on somebody else, but you were maybe an accomplice or someone that you were questioned. Something may have happened. Mm-hmm. But from what we can figure out from the, four, the theories is that evil spirits, not evil spirits, vengeful spirits, yep. 
you are the killer. Mm-hmm. You either have schizophrenia or dissociative identity disorder. Mm-hmm. Uh, the killer is either the phone guy, and mm-hmm. or uh, you are playing as one of the victims of the bite of eighty seven, or you are just more more likely that you were just a uh, victim of circumstances. You are either look similar or you're in the similar position of who killed them, and they don't care. They just want their revenge on anything that looks res- or resembles anything that killed them. Mm-hmm. Which is why they mostly go after you. But it does also make sense that Phone Guy is the killer because on night four, they go after him. Yep. They go after him and Pretty much. it's almost as if all of them come after yeah. him at once. Yep. So uh, apparently they got their revenge. But what makes me also think is that uh, either with that theory that they're just getting anybody that resembles him... That's why they go after you still, even though he's still already dead. Or you may have been an accomplice. One of those two, but what really gets me is in Five Nights at Freddy's 1, uh, the Night 5 recording, that's not a human voice. That sounds like the animatronics. If you play Five Nights, if, if you listen to the screams from the animatronics, especially Golden Freddy, if you got the Golden Freddy scream, uh, you see his limp body, and then the... Uh, screen flashes to just his face and him screaming at mm-hmm. you before the game crashes. Well, if you look at the uh, mini games and listen to the mini games, you can hear almost like the animatronics are saying something mm-hmm. as they're walking after the marionette or they're doing whatever mini game it is. Um, so it, the voice, even though it's the tale of Yogi. Yeah, the the light, yeah, the tales of a, uh, a, yogi, of a yogi, pretty much. Even though it's the tales of a yogi, if you listen to it, it sounds a lot like one of the animatronics is saying something on the phone. Yeah, which is creepy because how do they know what numbers to push? How do they know how to use a phone? How do they know how to do anything over in there just by teleporting, running across the room, and just being in different places at different times? Yep, that, yeah, just like that. Yeah, pretty much how we can go from that one room all the way to the closet. Yep. Or the bathroom, which is the ladies' bathroom still, which is kind of interesting. Or how they stare at you through the window in the first game. Yeah, if you flash the light, you can see them through the window, and they're staring at you with their mouths open, ready to chomp on you the first chance they get. Yep. But then... This is the theory that I most likely think that's going to, uh, that makes sense is that it's open to interpretation. Ah, oh, boy. Yeah, because it is so many uh, theor- uh, things left open, nothing's uh, case closed, shut, nothing like that. Everything's just left out for other people to put their own opinions in, and that's why a lot of people raged about if this game is a prequel, a prequel, pe- <laughs> or a sequel. I mean, yeah. if you can do that, you've done a good job. Or if you've not did this, then you are very lucky that this happened to you twice. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Matt Pat. Um, but yes, and I, I personally don't like that one because it seems like it's a cop-out. It seems like you took an amalgamation of stuff and said, okay, I'm going to throw this in the game for no rhyme or reason and then just let it go, which kind of ruins the whole storytelling scenario aspect of it because it's just a jumble of mm-hmm. random facts that you put together and say, well, here's a game. Well, that's the good thing about it, too, because it makes people buy this game. It does. It makes them have what we're doing right now, a whole bunch of people coming together trying to figure out what's true and what's not. This is true. Uh, but and I like to think that my stories, especially in video games, have some kind of cohesion and flow to them. Well, yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, it just... Uh, the biggest thing I can think of, or the recent and most recent one of something like this happening, is the P- uh, PT trailer or the uh, playable trailer that you could play. That yeah. thing, pretty much, it has all these things that's left open. They have different um, languages put in there, and Kojima, which is the one who uh, helped create this uh, thing. All hail Kojima! Yeah, that too. Uh, you can buy the shirt. I'm pretty sure that, yes. um, uh, let's see, Caddy still has those shirts available for him. Can't wait. That um, you, uh, he pretty much wanted the whole world to come together and try to figure out the secrets behind this pl- play- playable trailer that is Silent Hills. Mm. And it literally has Japanese, Korean, Swedish, German, 
mm-hmm. English, all this put together, and uh, hopefully that the whole world will come together, figure it out, figure what the mm-hmm. messages mean, mm-hmm. what all the secrets mm-hmm. are, and what's left open, and what could happen. Mm. Same thing that's happened here. He wants mm-hmm. the whole community mm-hmm. for this game to come together, and he just sits back and watch and see what people do. And laughs and rubs his hands as he brilliantly releases the game earlier than anticipated. Uh, yeah, but um, let's see. But there's still hope that there may be a final conclusion if he does make a third game. Yes, because they never really showed or talked about uh, explicitly what happened on the day of the bite of '87, and they never really pointed to who the murderer definitively was. Yep. And that could be explained also in the first pizzeria yep. that we've never even mm-hmm. seen, only heard about uh, in a slight passage, pretty much when the phone guy talks to us. Yep. Mm-hmm. And even uh, in the uh, first, I want to say, in the first game when um, when uh, in Friday, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's Two, he mentions the diner, mm-hmm. like. Fred's diner and something yep. like that, but he mentions it offhandedly. Yeah, like he's trying to remember that was where we were trying to. He was trying to figure out, or the company's trying to figure out where the old manager went, so they can finally figure out if they knew anything uh, of any incidents that's related to what's happening to them. Yes. Um, so those are all the theories. That is all of the lore. Yeah, all that makes sense, pretty much. I'm pretty. There's a lot of other weird ones. Here's some. Here's a couple of them. That um, one that um, apparently Foxy isn't trying to kill you. Apparently he's running down the hall to check up on you to make sure everything's okay. And the only reason why you die is because he pops out like a jump scare and you have a heart attack. Really? Yeah, that's one of the theories that goes out there. Wow. Um, another one that I've heard was that the the person who actually killed the kids were the animatronics. They The theory behind them was that they've been tampered with so they're to keep the kids happy and protected from all the other pedophiles and killers. They thought the safest idea was to shove them inside themselves, the animatronics, to keep them safe. Mm, pretty much like yeah. a death hug, pretty much. Uh, and there are, God, there's a whole bunch of other ones, but those were the only ones that actually made sense, at least to yeah. me. There's probably other ones that people think that make more sense, but I don't think so. Yeah. Now, some of the... the Issues that I see with some of the explanations um, that they have about this game is, um, one, the marionette. I have a problem because the marionette is established in the game, through the minigames, as the one that imparts children's souls or whatever into the animatronics. Mm -hmm. Um, And I believe that the marionette is the first child who was killed because if you look at the marionette's mask... It has those same type of tear patterns as the little kid who was crying in the first mini game, where you had to give him cake, and Freddy was the only one who saw him get killed. Yep. Um, and in the and also the marionette floats. All the other animatronics, you see them have a jerky kind of walking motion, except the marionette. His feet never touch the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, so the marionette, you see. He's the one who imparts the spirits of the children into the animatronics. Well, if you look at that pre-night uh, sequence where you can look left and you can look right, um, you look out and you're looking out over a birthday area mm-hmm. or a party group Pretty area. Pretty much a party room. You're looking out over a party room that looks fairly new. Um, and it looks like you're on stage. And so when you look to your left, you see Bonnie. When you, when you look to your right, you see Bonnie. When you look to your left, you see Chica. Now, um, as these spirits are being imparted, you know, you go through progressively through the night, and then you see Bonnie and Chica look at you, and then you see Freddy standing in front of you, which leads me to believe that you are uh, Foxy. The issue I have with that is that uh, Foxy... If you look in the mini games as well, is usually kept by himself behind a curtain. Yeah, or you could be in Pirate's the guy Cove. That, yeah, the guy that's hiding in the cave, or not the cave, uh, the guy that's hiding inside the suit, or it could be Golden Freddy for all we know. It could be that you're inhabiting the Golden Freddy suit because he was an actual animatronic. Mm-hmm. They said it. Um, but on the very fifth night, the last night, the, the little cutscene that you get before you go back to. Um, trying to survive. 
you see just the marionette. You look uh, and you see the marionette mm-hmm. and he's following you. And the marionette mm-hmm. is floating. He's not stepping. You don't hear any machinery work. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. I got to the... Oh, it did. <laughs> oh, my heart. Okay, so you see the marionette floating back and forth. Um, following you and then you hear that weird little animatronic. Yeah, yell. that buzzing. That little buzzing. But they don't say that the marionette was actually built at that time of the first restaurant where the first murders were happening. The only time you really hear about the marionette is when security guy talks about him in Five Nights at Freddy's 2. He seems like he's a new addition, at least to me, with the new set of animatronics and the heightened security. So I don't know how he could have, or how the murders could have happened before in a previous establishment, with the exception of that one child, yeah, um, and their souls being part into the animatronics, um, if the marionette didn't exist until that second game one and two, if you look at Bonnie and Chica, they look like the versions from the first game, and they're whole. They're not missing their faces and body parts and jaws that are delocated, so you see rows of other teeth. Yeah. Um, so it looks like. It had to happen either in the first establishment where they were possessed or the later establishment that we see in Five Nights at Freddy's, uh, the first game. Mm -hmm. But in both of those situations, the marionette is not there. We know that the spirit of the child is there because you see posters of the crying child on the walls when the posters change. So that's that's kind of a loophole that I'm seeing here with that theory. The only thing we can see from that theory is that he was one of the old ones that was in the first establishment, and like many of the other ones, they he was revamped and remodeled to be used. Because remember, the mangled was supposed to be looking like Foxy, but he got messed up so much, so he just was a pick a take apart, pick a um, put together attraction. Mm-hmm. The uh, Jack in the Box mm-hmm. guy could have been something from the previous place, and then easily turn into the Jack in the Box. For all mm-hmm. we know, he could have been a clown. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's the thing is I don't know how the uh, child because we know that the spirits of the animatronics were imbued into the s- animatronic suits that the children were stuffed in. Yep, M- my. Th- thinking is that the killer, my original thinking was that the killer, when he murdered the first child, put that first child's body in the marionette's box before he had a chance to yeah. dispose of the body, mm-hmm. which is how the marionette originally got possessed. Yep. Um, which is very freaky because didn't we already say that the marionette... No, we didn't go over that. That the animatronics in the Five Nights at Freddy's 2 can walk around and go anywhere yeah. at any point. And the marionette is free to move around. Mm-hmm. That the marionette is free to move around. Freaky stuff is happening. Is yep. free to move around at will. So yep. once he's out of his box, he can walk anywhere. Yep. Um, and the marionette is very freaky because he is a he's a lighter build than yep. the other robots. He's very skinny. He's very lithe, um, and he moves like. Foxy. Yeah, fast. He moves very fast and he lunges at you, Mm -hmm. whereas the other ones, they kind of pop up from a corner. Yeah, except Uh, for Foxy and the Mangle. Yeah, except for Foxy and the Mangle, which lunge directly at you. Yeah. Um, And that is freaky in and of itself. So the the marionette was something I thought was a little bit displaced. Um... Cool mechanic, though, that they put in there in the game. Very Just trying to put him in the lore is where the hard part comes in. Yeah, it's it's hard to fit him chronologically in and have it make sense. Yeah, um, or unless he's just a spirit that manifested himself to look like that, and he's not actually a robot at all. That would be even freakier. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, for all we know, or like other theories, that it's a schizophrenic nightmare, or he's just all in your head. Yes, um... What was, what was the other thing that I could not place? Uh, uh, golden. What happened to the day guard? Yeah, um, that was it. For all we know, that 
the Amber Trunks killed him, mm-hmm. or the killer, uh, mm-hmm. the or the day shift guy saw something uh, that would uh, put the killer in the bad position, so he killed him. Or yeah. he was a partner. And he overstepped his bounds, and then he died. Or he saw something and just ran to the hills. Yeah, because uh, my theory was was that um, in the mini game where it says give them life, the marionette floats around. He delivers mm-hmm. presence and life to all the sacks that you see. Are they sacks or are they dead bodies? I'm pretty sure they're dead bodies. Okay, so he's giving presence to all these dead bodies, and then you know the heads of the marionettes or the heads of the animatronics mm-hmm. pop up. Well. If you freeze frame right before uh, or right after you give the fourth dead body life, you see a fifth dead body pop up in the middle of the room. And then if you continue, Golden Freddy's face pops out at you, Mm -hmm. which makes me think that the uh, day shift guard found out what was going on before the uh, phone guy could have a chance to dispose of the bodies. He caught him in a compromised position, and he killed him and stuffed his body into the Golden mm-hmm. Freddy costume, yep. which was in the back. Because if you look at it, the Golden Freddy costume in the first game mm-hmm. looks limp and empty. Like it's a dead body, pretty much. Like it's a dead body, but if you look at the one in this game, it looks mm-hmm. fuller. Well, kind of, but I think they just made the design look better. But it's pretty much the same thing. It looks like a dead body, but both of them also have blood coming out of it. Yeah, which makes me think that, you know, he did put this grown man, because it's hard to stuff a grown man inside of an animatronic. Yeah, so it's much easier to take the animatronic out, stuff him in the suit. Yep, so he took the endoskeleton out of the animatronic, which is why some people say that... Um, yeah, it's a rare occurrence, because he will... There's this animatronic that uh, has, has the yeah, Freddy outline, he has the ears and all this other stuff, that the other ones don't. And it comes after you, as well as the Golden mm-hmm. Freddy costume itself yeah. coming after you. Because you mainly just see it on the um, uh, the cameras. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you see it down the hallway on the fifth night, I think. Of uh, the Golden Freddy itself, yeah, just a head floating there, kind of. Yeah, and when you do mm-hmm. see Golden Freddy sitting in your room, um, mm-hmm. his face pops out at you mm-hmm. um, as the kind of death animation. Yeah, pretty much. So... Yes, uh, that was something else that uh, made me feel a bit questionable about some of the stuff that was discussed. Um, but yeah, till Scott gives us the true answers, or there's the third game that gives us the final conclusion, we only have the facts. Yes. Um, and at, did you have anything? That we pretty much explained everything as far as I know. Okay, so I want to tell you all a story. Okay. And this is the original theory that we had come up with before the mountains of evidence came down yeah. um, about what we think was the general progression of the Five Nights at Freddy's thing, which goes as such. So you have the original diner, and this is when we only thought there were three locations. Yeah. So you have the original diner, um, Freddy's Diners and Drive-Ins and Dives. Yeah, and, something like that. Um, it was a truck stop, uh, pit stop, it was a diner, it wasn't the best, their sanitation code wasn't necessarily up to date, but it was in the 80s, so, yeah. you know, passable. yeah, it was passable for the 80s where they could wipe their nuts on your steak and call it, uh, au jus. Yeah. So, you have this manager, he has a sort of failing business, he sees the rise of family and family oriented, uh, restaurants like Applebee's, Bennigan's, mm-hmm. TGI Friday's come up in the 80s and he wants to capitalize on the growing trend so he goes ahead and he sees the Fazbear Corporation that they have the new animatronics because animatronics would have been fairly new back then yeah especially ones that can walk around yes seeing as how we don't have those now so he sees the advertisement for it he's like wow I got a little bit of money let's change the image of the diner so he goes ahead and he gets the Freddy uh, animatronic because he probably only had enough money for one Yeah. so he goes and he gets the Freddy costume um, and they see that um, it's starting to bring in more families and starting to bring in new customers and all this other kind of stuff and it's good for business well you have a uh, security guard who comes in and he works with uh, the new people because he's like, all right, we have some stuff that we need to, and this is a bar, so we had some fights, so we need some kind of security to help root out the riffraff. Yeah. But it turns out that this guy 
who he hired as a security guard is actually a pedophile. Mm -hmm. So what he was doing was while they were taking uh, some of the riffraff out, he was also molesting the children. Yeah. At some point, you know, touching the children in an inappropriate way, there were allegations that came around, but now that it's a family oriented place, you have mothers and parents concerned mm-hmm. about the health and sanitation, all this other kind of stuff. So, amid the allegations and the rumors of all of that going on and the molestation allegations, the new guy was like, you know what? It's, or the manager was like, no, it's not worth it. Let's just shut down the place. I don't want anything to do with the business anymore. Laid off everybody and just close the place down. Mm-hmm. Well, Fazbear Entertainment heard about that, and they said, well, we can't have that. We don't want our name to be besmirched, mm-hmm. so why don't we go ahead, let's mm-hmm. get the business back, we'll buy back the building, we'll fill it with the new animatronics, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. we'll just try to hush all the rumors. Yeah. So they went ahead and um, mm-hmm. reopened it as Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, a place for fun and family, and it's family-friendly, don't mind the rumors and the allegations from the last place. We're under new management. Yeah. We have new animatronics. It's not just Freddy anymore. But they forgot to check the history. It was an uh, allegation. It never actually went to court. He was never prosecuted. So the old guard came back and was a guard again. Yep. But he was like, wow, these guys, they're, they got these new animatronics. They're in the database. But the animatronics are getting broken mm-hmm. easily. So I know what we do. Hey, mm-hmm. you guys, we got a suit in the back. How about um, we have somebody out on the floor mm-hmm. to monitor the parents? Because, you know, the, the whole molestation thing. Yeah. It'll be like when the animatronics, the kids won't mm-hmm. be able to tell. You'll give them something to tug on so they won't always break the machines. Mm-hmm. And at least I can talk to the kids and pretend like I'm Freddy. Yeah. So... Like a Chuck E. Cheese. Mm, yeah. So you have this guy and he's out there with these kids and the kids are pulling on him and he's getting a joy out of it and he starts hunting again yep. for children. Once he scopes out the place, gets a good thing and also he has his face covered while he's in a costume so he's not alerting the new animatronics that have the link to the child database. Say, like, yeah, this is great. I can be out here. I can be on the day shift. This is wonderful. I get to be all around all these little kids. Oh, God, they keep touching me. Um, so he starts to get a little bolder, and he starts to lure kids away and starts to bring him in a private room with Freddy or a private time with Freddy or one-on-one time with Freddy. And one day he got a little overzealous. And while he was doing what he was doing with the child, something happened. Something went wrong. Or something went right with him. Or something went extremely right with him, but unfortunately, this time, the kid died. And so, he's like, oh my goodness, uh, the kid died. I don't know what I'm going to do. Let me stuff this kid's body in the marionette box while I figure out what's going on and what I have to do. Um, So the kid disappears. The parents ask if they've seen him. He says no. They couldn't figure out what happened. They couldn't find it on the cameras. And so he goes ahead, and that's when the marionette gets possessed by this kid. Now this, mind you again, this is before we saw the minigame where the little kid was crying, and we saw him getting murdered outside of the establishment. So we fast forward a couple years. uh, Not a couple years. We fast forward a couple of weeks. He's gotten over the murder. He's disposed of the body. But he keeps looking at this marionette. Looks like it's thinking. You know, it's doing something. That sets Um, him off. That he just does not like. Yeah, that he just does not like. And that's when his uncomfort with that marionette comes in. So he's going, he's going. And all of a sudden he's luring kids away. But he got a thrill from killing that first kid. So he's going and he's preparing a room. He's preparing a wonderful room. But all of a sudden, now, um, the old animatronic... Or, yeah, all of a sudden now, um, they have to go ahead and they have to bring back the old animatronics to use for spare parts. Well, he goes ahead... He brings him in, and he's making a separate room. He goes, wow, we got this in this back room. Nobody goes back there. We'll put him back there. And he starts killing kids again, but he doesn't know what to do with them. And he goes, oh, well, nobody goes in this back room except for the mechanics, and it's dark. They can't really see anything. So why don't I put the kids' bodies in these animatronics here? 
because we don't use them. It's a perfect place to stash it. So he starts his killing spree, and that's when the new security guard, the one you play in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, starts noticing that not only are the new animatronics walking around like they're supposed to, but the old ones are up and moving. And he's like, well, I can't figure out what's going on, and, you know, he's reporting it. Nobody's believing him. Um, so we fast forward to a couple of nights like the fourth night, the fifth night. This guy, he's feeling good. He's killed this fifth kid. He's riding high. But something happens. It's like, okay, he's putzing around. He's finalizing his new dungeon slash torture slash killing chamber. And time goes by a little too quick. Because, you know, the new, the night guard, he usually comes in at about uh, 12, 10, pretty much. Yeah, 10 usually, or 11, whatever. I'd say to get there on time, you usually get there about 11.50. Yeah. So the only person who's usually there from closing time, which is about 6, 7 o'clock at night, to 12 is him. He's like, oh, don't worry. You guys, I'll lock up. I'll do the cleanup. I'll make sure everything's all set for the night guy to come in. So he usually has five hours to work his magic. Mm-hmm. Well, so he's there, and all of a sudden, you know, the lights are dim. He doesn't want anybody to know he's in there moving around doing stuff. Yeah. So the lights are dim. He's walking around. And he's like, yeah, I got it. I'm finally. And he's oh, God, it's late. It's late. This guy, he's going to be there. It's about, I'd say it's about 11.30. Yeah. It's about 11.30. So, oh, my God, he's going to be here in 20 minutes. I got to get, get out of here. So uh, he goes out. And he's like, oh, my goodness. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm walking out. I forgot the mask, but it's okay. You know, the, the cameras or whatever. And he walks out. And he sees, like, Bonnie. New Bonnie. It's like, Bonnie, oh, wow, Bonnie's walking sequence is on. I don't want Bonnie to see me without the face on um, because it might trigger him. So let me just go another way. So the place is big. He figures he'll outwalk Bonnie. Bonnie doesn't move that fast. Yeah. And if you look in the minigames, he moves faster than the animatronics. Yeah, oh, God can get away. Yeah. So he turns around. He goes to another room. He's mumbling to himself about, you know, I got this, I got this. He's running down his checklist. And all of a sudden, he sees Chica with her beak off. No. Oh, oh my God. There's Chica. Oh my goodness. Chica's at the end of the hallway. I don't know if Chica saw me. Bonnie's back here. I, I can still get out. That's not a problem. So he leaves. It's like, whew, I made it past Bonnie and Chica. He's going through his checklist again. And all of a sudden, he's Freddy. New Freddy's. Like, oh my God. What is going on? These guys, I've never been around this late. You know what? It's their walking sequence. They're making sure that all things are covered. He's hearing stuff move around. He's like, oh my goodness. This, maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. I just got to get out of here. It's me. I just got to get out of here. Okay. So he, he leaves. He's like, okay, Chica's there. Bonnie's there. Freddy is there. Hey, Freddy. Freddy is there. And so he's going back in the back room. And he's messing around. And all of a sudden he looks and he sees Bonnie. It's not new Bonnie. It's old Bonnie. Bonnie, who's decommissioned, Bonnie, who's not supposed to be moving, is standing, looking at him with those red eyes. Like, yeah. oh, my, oh, my God, that's Bonnie. Wow, what the hell is Bonnie doing up? Bonnie's not supposed to be up. Uh, Bonnie still has a kid in him. What the hell is Bonnie doing? Oh, my God. So he's like, you know what? I, You know what? Oh, oh God, shit. Safe place, so, safe place. Yeah, safe place, safe place. So now he's starting to panic. So he's going around. He's like, okay, safe place. I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. So he leaves. He leaves. He's trying to, he's trying to get out. He's fumbling for his keys. Oh, my God. There's Chica. But it's old Chica. He's like, what the hell are Bonnie and Chica doing out? It? I don't know. I don't know. But something is wrong. Something is very wrong here. I got to get out of here. So he's leaving. He's dodging, going. And he starts moving a little closer towards his dungeon. And he's like, you know, I got to get out of here. There's still an emergency exit. There's still an emergency exit through the kitchen. I can just get out of here, and it's fine. Goes to the emergency exit, and he sees old Freddy standing in front of the emergency exit door. And he's like, this is a problem. I am. But you know what? You know what? I got my room. Nobody knows about my room. I'm going to get out of here. I'm just going to get out of here, and I'm going to make it out of here, and I'm going to be fine. So he leaves. He goes down to the dungeon. He's like, I can wait it out. I can wait till about 6 a.m. I may not sleep, but you know what? I can lock the door at least. So he goes down. He goes into the secret room. He's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I don't know what the hell was going on with those animatronics, but I'm here. I'm here and I'm safe. I'm here and I'm safe. Oh, my God. And he turns around and he sees the marionette. But the marionette is not alone this time. The marionette has a friend. He's with him. 
Mm-hmm. That's Foxy. Yeah, one or both of them. Mm-hmm. One or both of them. Foxy or the Mangled. One or both of them. And then he realized, oh, mm-hmm. shit. And he turns around to leave. And he realizes that that way is barred. Mm-hmm. But not only the old mm-hmm. animatronics, but the new ones that are standing behind him. And he realizes that his life mm-hmm. is going to come to a close soon. Very close. Mm-hmm. Very close. And so he gets jumped and murderized by all of, mm-hmm. well, the old ones. Pretty much want their revenge for this guy. Pretty much the ones that animatronics that have been possessed mm-hmm. by the slaughtered kids have finally gotten their revenge on this guy. Who's the murderer? Who we didn't know was the phone guy at that time. Yeah, or not, who, for all we know. Yeah, and it could have been uh, that instead of either killing him and stuffing him into a suit, which is why you see Golden Freddy, uh, we had uh, theorized that Golden Freddy was the murdered uh, day shift guardsman yeah. uh, who was walking around mad because you were the ones who were supposed to be killed instead of him. You were yeah. supposed to take their revenge, but they caught him anyway. Yep. So he was angry. And then they were still coming after you because you came in right after they mm-hmm. killed him. They're like, what the hell? We just killed you. Mm-hmm. How are you still here? And then they continue to hunt you because you look mm-hmm. like a security guard. Yeah, for all they know, they just all they know is a security guard could have killed them. Yep. All so all right. security guards die, I guess. Mm-hmm. All yep. rent cops. All rent cops. And then it, it mm-hmm. grew to all adults. Yeah. Because when... they started to stare. So either they killed him and stuffed him mm-hmm. in a Freddy suit or... They killed him. Well, they didn't kill him. Uh, Foxy or the Mangled bit his head. And that was the victim that was the killer suspect that they had found who was grievously, grievous, grievously? Yeah, he grievously, got bit. <laughs> yeah, injured, had head trauma, but he's not a threat to anyone else. He's a vegetable. Yeah, he's pretty much a vegetable steak. Yeah, so we'll just send him to the mental hospital. They'll take care of him. We'll never see him again. We can tell the public we got the guy. Yep. And that's it. But the animatronics, the spirit of the animatronics, were never satisfied. So that's why they're hunting you not only in this one, but why we thought it was a dream sequence that you kept living the nightmare over and over in the second one. Yep. But that was our crowning glory uh, theory before this avalanche of evidence came. So I hope you all enjoyed the dark yep. tale. I'm pretty sure Freddy has enjoyed his... Uh... Freddy is giggling in the damn background. I know he enjoyed that story because he was one of the stars. Oh, you he's a pervert. Freddy is pervert because he hangs out in the girls' bathroom when they're not there sniffing toilet seats. I don't know about toilet seats. <laughs> I was going to say that. I better say sucking on tampons. <laughs> that could explain why some of the pictures he uh, has blood coming out of his mouth. Oh, that's so wrong. Oh, yes. But, yes, we have ended... This episode on such an adult note. So, thank you all so much for being here with us, for listening to us try to debunk and decode everything that's going on in Five Nights at Freddy's. Like, even though I hate to admit it, it may just be that one where it's open to interpretation. And it, it's most certainly fun to sit here and think about the what ifs. Yeah. Especially that wild tale that we had spun before the other evidence came in. Clearly telling us we were wrong. In some was, parts, yes. But it was a cool story, nonetheless. Yep. Child molester turned murderer who was a victim of his own murders. Yep. Karma's uh, bitch. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And, and she gets her revenge. One way she or another. Has, wait. Yes, I can say that because it's really female. Dog. Anyway, so... I am Shade. I'm the Mad Adder. And we will see you all in the next theory. Oh, yes. Bye, Freddy. Uh, Bye. Bye. Uh, Bye.